slides are giving you a bit of a background um, on the Bateman Code, how it works very briefly, uh, what it costs and what the benefits are of, of using the Bateman Code. So first, quickly, um, I just wanted to talk to you about the extent of the problem that our peatlands are in. You might already know this, um, but about 10% of the UK's land area is covered by peatlands. Um, but unfortunately, over about 80% of these peatlands are in a modified or a dam damaged state. We desperately need to restore these peatlands, these damaged peatlands, but public finance can't fix the scale that's actually needed. So we need private finance. Um, to help us with this. So peatlands, when they are intact and fully functioning, they have um, they are a net carbon sink, um, a small net carbon sink. So that means they have a, a climate cooling effect. They also have a lot of biodiversity um, and they're beautiful, obviously. However, in a degraded state, our peatlands are emitting a lot of greenhouse gases. Um, so there's a lot of CO2 stored on the, in, in the peat, and if you drain your peat, that CO2 is coming out, um, and that's obviously then warming our climate. Luckily, not all is lost. We can actually stop this, this damage and we can restore the peatlands um, by blocking drains, by making sure that the eroding bits are getting revegetated. And if you raise the water table, um, the emissions that are coming off them are reduced very, very quickly. So if you are a landowner and you have a degraded peatland that is eligible under the code, you can use the peatland code and follow, follow our, our steps that are set out. Um, and then you can get carbon units in the end that you can sell um, to companies that are looking to offset their emissions. So the peatland code is a voluntary certification standard to attract private funding for peatland restoration projects in exchange for climate benefits by providing assurances to buyers. So it's a project that's developed and managed by the Irish and UK peatland program. It's UK based. It's about emission reductions via peatland restoration. It doesn't necessarily account for the carbon that's already stored in the peatlands since that's not additional and that's a rule from carbon markets. Um, we use third party validation and verification via an approved certification body and a number of eligibility criteria and a number of legal and financial tests. I won't go into these today, um, but if you want to learn more about them, you can have a look on our website um, or drop me an email and we can discuss them further. So there are different ways of going through the code. One would be to take it all on yourself. Um, but there are also more and more intermediaries starting to work in the area that could help you. Um, they all have different mechanisms of associating with a project and different fee structures. So it's, it's really important to talk to a few to find out what works actually best for you. So the role of so the project developers and progress basically. So the role of a project developer is to fill in all your patent code documents for you, have an account on our market registry, um, and manage a project of the whole duration and potentially also find a buyer for your carbon units. The role of progress is simply to find you a buyer and help with contracts, but not to actually fill in any documents of your, of your, any Bidens Code documents. So what does it cost to go through the code? So the good thing is that the code allows up to 85% of your total project costs to be funded via public finance. So you need at least 15% of carbon finance. So for example, in England, you now have the Nature for Climate Peatland Grant Scheme, um, where you can normally apply up to 75% of your total project cost. The first round has just, um, has just closed, but the next round is going to open at the start of next year, I believe. So the opportunity costs are actually ne neglectable. So what can you still do on your land or, or at home, what could you not do anymore in your land if you go through the peatland code? So you cannot have a winter amount, for example, within your project area, your peatland code project area. You could, however, potentially have it next to one or close to one. Grazing is still okay. 
as long as your density is not too high, so as long as you don't damage your pigment's restoration, basically. Um, you can still mechanically cut if that would be necessary. But in theory, if you have re-retted your pigment successfully, then you shouldn't need to do that. Um, but you can still have all your income streams as well as a carbon income stream. So that's that's great. The other good thing that we now know is that at least in England, you won't be penalised on the future environmental schemes if you go through the penal code. So that was in the, in the England Peat Action Plan. So what do we mean by carbon finance and how, how does it actually work? So legally, all carbon units that are coming off a project belong to the landowner. And it's up to the landowner to decide what to do with them. So you've got a few op options. So you could sell them all or a proportion as PIU. So that's pending issuance units that you get at the start of your project. Um, and you can sell them via project developer or broker, um, or you can find a buyer yourself. You can invest your own money into the project um, and then hold on to your carbon units yourself to personally report, so to personally offset your own company, your own company emissions on. You can hold on to them for now and sell them in the future at any time you want. So maybe as verified units um, or if you or when the price is higher, it's totally up to you. There's also speak of uh, a pigment carbon guarantee from government. It's not certain that this will go ahead, but if it would, then there would be you could potentially sell your carbon units to a guaranteed price to the government or to the market if that if the market price is higher at that point. But that will need to see a rate if that's going to go through. So what are the benefits for for a landowner? So you've got new revenue streams from carbon. There could be a possible uplift in land value. So there's some evidence that land values in the uplands are being driven by natural capital buyers interested in carbon. So if your land is already under the code um, and you've not sold all your units yet, it is likely that you could attract maybe that type of buyer. And obviously you're also contributing to the climate targets while generating all the core benefits of beacon restoration like biodiversity um, as well. So under the code, we are always balancing rigor and simplicity. So the market really demands that the code is rigorous. Um, companies are risk averse and they lack expertise to judge themselves if something is, is credible. So we need a really rigorous code. The government also demands that any company reporting carbon um, also voluntarily only use accredited schemes like the Woodland Carbon Code and the Pigment Code. And land managers and investors can also be detailed if the, if they perceive that the process is too complex. Um, so it's a, diff, it's, a, it's a balancing act that we are trying to do and I'm, and I'm hopeful that, that we are getting it right, but any feedback is always helpful. So future developments for the code. So at the moment we are working towards UCAS accreditation by the end of this year. Um, so UCAS is going to assess the conformity of the Peatland Code against the ISO standard. Um, and then as soon as, as the code is, is approved by UCAS and our certification body also goes through UCAS accreditation. And at the start of next year, we are expecting version two update of the code, which will have um, updated emission factors and also include fence, hopefully. Further, I am really working hard on further landowner engagement. We need more projects um, to actually, there's so much demand for our carbon units. so. We need more projects to actually um, be able to supply enough carbon units. And the other thing I am working on um, is that one of the key the key barriers that we are hearing for landowners to engage with the Peatland Code is that there is that as a concern of not making enough money. Um, so is there, that there might be a risk of losing agricultural subsidies by rewetting your land. So one of the solutions is to combine the grants. Like I said, we allow up to 85% of public finance coming in um, and that works really well, um, especially in Scotland and England, but also Wales um, and Northern Ireland, that's possible. And further, we are really seeking and talking to governments all for um, about a really firm assurance 
the agricultural support will apply to a GoFund and help the peatlands. So we now have that in place in England, so that's great. And hopefully the other three countries will follow. So that was me. Thanks very much for listening. Um, like I said, you can always get in touch with me if there's anything you want to discuss further, or if you have any questions um, after this talk, please drop me an email and um, I'm happy to chat. Thanks very much.